Yeah. There may be enough room for this one to come off and slide out. Yeah, let's do four again. Every one of these gets the ceiling around it. Okay. I am William Wynn. Uh, I have been an EAA member since 1989. Uh, what Corvair College is, is it's a hands-on technical workshop where people come and they bring their own engines and they're here in a very friendly, outgoing setting uh, where they're gonna learn how to build their own engine, do it here under our supervision and uh, work all their way through a test run on it. We work from seven o'clock in the morning till one o'clock in the morning, uh, do it a couple of days in a row. Uh, the college is free. Uh, everybody who's a builder is welcome to come to it. Uh, you don't have to have an engine. Uh, you can come and observe and learn. The experience is modeled on uh, the core of the EAA, which is learn, build, and fly. And the flavor of it is uh, mostly what I would think Rockford used to be like. My name is Dick Navertil, and I'm honing the cylinders for my Corvair engine for my PD. My name is Mike. Maury and I am assembling a Corvair, three liter Corvair, and we just got done putting the crank and the cam in and bolting up the case. Joe Sarcioni, I'm working on bolting the head onto the engine. My name's Luke and I just sprayed red stuff on a bearing. Good job, man. You did a great job. I hope to build an airplane one day. If you look across the room, there's a whole cross section of where everybody is. So to an observer, you can see the entire experience played out on one table. Uh, and then we have 25 tables of people here doing this. I would never use RTV. What I use is um, anaerobic sealer. See that red stuff that's on his fifth bearing housing? Corvair is a General Motors product. It was made by Chevrolet division from 1960 to 1969. They made 1 1.8 million Corvairs which is an enormous number by aircraft standards. The engine is unusual that it is a horizontally opposed air-cooled uh, six-cylinder engine. Uh, that kind of makes it a, a really good candidate uh, to take advantage of all the things that Lycoming and Continental know and do. It's economical, the Corvair is an economical engine to run and repair and build. It's a tough little motor. All the core values of the Corvair engine we like, you know, affordability, um, camaraderie at events like a Corvair College, um, the fact that you get to learn something about your engine uh, when you build it, and uh, that's both good and bad. And uh, it provides a reasonable amount of horsepower at around 100 horsepower with a reasonable weight. And um, all that combines a package that we feel is, is uh, worth using, and uh, we really like it. It's also very smooth and sounds great. So going here and it doesn't cause a leak but a lot of times the paint will because the paint will you know might come off yeah. and then you, have you know the ed educational aspects of this engine building is really what you know EAA is all about education building aircraft and building an engine gets right in there and gives you even more depth than just the airplane it's really a, a neat idea what you see here going on today this weekend is grassroots aviation at its best uh, this one came from a guy that was uh, just a few miles down the road from me who has a small business. I got a whole running engine, so I'm very ecstatic about that. <laughs> I wanted a Corvair engine because I wanted to, first of all, I wanted to build something of my own. I wanted to see the guts. I wanted to see everything inside it. I wanted to know that every piece of it had, I, I had put my hands on it. People who say, oh, I wouldn't touch the engine. I don't, I don't, I don't want to touch the engine. My biggest thing is I think they haven't had an introduction or they haven't had a setting or an instructor. There are plenty of people who thought, oh, I, I couldn't be a pilot until they met the right flight instructor. I'm the same way with your en being your engine instructor. You're not going to use the rod bolts again. They're all going to be rebuilt and that rod bolt's going to come out. So if you stick a wooden block in there and then rotate that Okay. Outward. My name is Charlie Reddit. Robert Reddit. And Bard Reddit. The grandpa. Yes. Three generations building an airplane. This all started uh, July 2012 at Oshkosh when you know, my dad's been talking about building an airplane for about 10 years and I just said, Dad, just pick an airplane and Robert and I will do everything we can to help you build it and, and here we are. Slide yours back, don't have to take it all well, 
Until I went to Oshkosh, until I came to a Corvair College, I had no uh, idea I could build my own engine, especially an airplane engine, I mean, even a car engine, much less an airplane engine. But coming here, you meet other people in the same situation who started from the same spot, who didn't know they could do it, and discovered that they could. Well, basically I've learned how an engine works. I mean, going from a not knowing what a crankshaft was, now I know how an engine works. And... Well, it's a wonderful family project. It's one of the best decisions I've ever made. I mean, my grandfather lives in Mississippi, and uh, we live in Arkansas. And we used to only see him, you know, for holidays, you know, maybe once or twice a month. Not very much, but as of lately, we've been visiting all the time, you know, cleaning out the shop together, coming out here building these, and just talking. It's a way of giving my dad to my son, you know, more than just a Thanksgiving dinner or going fishing at the lake, but in something that we created together. That's why I'm doing it. <laughs> This, this is the home building experience. Taking on a challenge that, you know, seems real incredible when you start. You're not quite sure you can do it and then finding out that you can and following in the footsteps of others who've done it before you and are willing to help. That's what it's all about. It's a feeling of community. It's a feeling of brotherhood. It's a feeling of people helping one another just for the pure pleasure of helping. And I think this is something that's made this country what it is. And I think it's going back to our grassroots ethical understandings of what it means to live a meaningful life.